Joffrey, Renly, Rob Stark, they're all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. House Grand are a small noble house based at the mouth of the Blackwater Rush. They can trace their lineage back to the First Men, yet intermarried with Andal settlers later converting to the Faith of the Seven. Many generations ago, they started out as a small family of shipbuilders, but as their wealth grew, so did their name, and a village sprung up by the coast. As the years passed by and the Grands grew more wealthy, the village turned into a thriving town, attracting small folk and traders alike. Grandport it was named, honouring the Grands that founded it, turning them into petty lords in their own right. Now, a small city and the trade centre of the Blackwater Bay, although only a modest place, it has high stone walls which are greatly defended by the Vulps Custos. Their castle, the Den, is a modest square fortress placed atop one of the three high hills. At the edge of the Blackwater Rush, the other two housing the modest Sept of Grand and the Great Barracks home to the Vulps Custos. They use the advantage of their perfectly placed position to deal in trade with the exotic east bringing in great wealth in coin and luxury items to trade with the rest of Westeros. The great city of Duskindale and the modest kingdom of the Duslangs lay just to the north however, dwarfing Grandport and hogging most of the eastern trade into the Blackwater. Because of this, the Grands took advantage of their shipbuilding prowess to build the great Grand Fleet. With this, they set out to colonise many of the uninhabited great islands of the Blackwater, and then set to building small fortresses and towns upon them, strengthening their hold upon the Blackwater and all its trade, using their great fleet with superior ships to police the waters and charge taxes to any other lords passing through their waters. They raised and placed four new lords to hold these islands in the name of House Grand. House Hydra would rule the lagoon. House Shame, Sweet Point Sound, House Mendelton, Falcon's Claw, and finally House Syrian would have Dragon's Rest. Many squabbling petty lords surround Grandport close by on all sides. In recent years they'd expanded northward peacefully, swallowing the lands of Stokeworth and Harmony's Keep, ruled over by Lord Gorsky and Congrove respectively, both close friends to Lord Grand. Stitch Grand, the current Grand Lord, now has ambitions of swallowing up the other petty lords to the south and west to expand his own domain up the Blackwater to further expand the city's trade routes as well as raise Grandport's defences on land and crowning himself a king in the process. The only problem being, the close by petty kingdoms of Rosby Darkling and the Hawk also desire these lands. Worst of all though is the looming threat of the formidable kingdom of the Storm King to the south and the Gardner Kings to the west, both of which would love to further expand their vast kingdoms by conquest. Now starts the long and difficult rise of House Grand from shipbuilders to petty lords to kings and who knows, maybe even kings of all Westeros. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Citadel with me, Grand Master Stitch, for the start of our Rise of House Grand custom series. Um, so yes, we are playing as Stitch of Grandport, my own custom character in my own custom city, custom house, with our little fox as our sigil. Obviously, I did a little sneak peek about this series last week in the 1000 subscriber thank you video. And we had the intro to this video where I went over a little bit in the history and lore of House Grand. But in case you didn't watch either of those, I will go over the history and lore just a tad. So, House Grand was a small family of shipbuilders that lived at the mouth of the Blackwater around the Andal invasion time. They were first men and then they married into Andals, but they were only small folk anyway. And then as they made more money off their shipbuilding, they built a village which turned into a town and now the small city of Grandport is there. And then they started not just selling the ships, but building them for themselves to build a great fleet, which they then used to colonise the four islands in the mouth of the Blackwater, Claw Isle, Dragonstone, Driftmark and Sweet Point Sound so that they could police all traffic coming in and out of the Blackwater and send all trade to Grandport as much as they could which obviously would have angered the Darklings of Duskendale which is still the biggest city in the Blackwater. But now, growing uh, wealthy off all of that trade, the Grands have grown ambitions to expand their lands, where they have grown into Stokeworth and Hayford, granting, making Grandport slightly bigger, but they have further ambitions 
to make this into a kingship and become the king of the Blackwater. So they want to claim all of these petty lordships to the south. And then from there, we want to form the Grand Lands, which is basically the uh, Crown Lands around the Blackwater. So we've got all these petty kings. And then from there, we'll just keep going and we'll see where we go. So uh, this is a custom series, going to be lots of custom characters. If you want to get involved in this one, you have to be a regular in the Discord server, just so I can keep up with custom characters, because with Knights of the North and then the Ironborn series on the way, I will get behind if I do custom characters for everybody for all three. So this is Discord members only, one character each only for your founder of your house, and they can't be overpowered. So here is our character who we're going to be playing as Lord Stitch of Grandport of House Grand and he's a great steward obviously as they've grown wealthy off trade so he's a still skilled steward a trained fighter a knight an administrator just stubborn honorable ambitious and temperate for our ambition we will just go with get married for now it's a nice easy one get some prestige and our focus is obviously going to be the rulership focus getting us a little bit more stewardship so yeah and we rule from grandport and then we have all of our custom characters made by the discord members so just north in stokeworth we have german goy sky made by a german and he is a great diplomat who has been through the wars over the years as you can see with his one eye but he is a great diplomacy as you can see he's got some amazing diplomacy so he is a great emissant he's quick shrewd a trained fighter a socializer diligent kind Gregorous, erudite, proud, charitable, one-handed, and one-eyed. And I love the sigil of the white crow on the blue background. The white and blue always look so nice on Crusader Kings 2 when you make sigils. And then to the west of that in Hayford, we have House Congrove, made by Chris in the Discord. And here is Lord Chris of House Congrove, and he is a skilled commander, an organizer. He's quick, strong, a trained fighter, attractive, a knight. He's a strategist. He's a master seducer, greedy, and lustful. Now, in our roleplay in the discord chris is like the king of quick fucks as we all call him as he has a ridiculous amount of children in the role play hence why he now has lustful and master seducer so hopefully he'll gain a hell of a lot of children and bastards in this series as well so that is our three lords around the blackwater but then we have our four lords who have been installed in the islands by the grands to police the traffic of trade coming in and out and to also protect the Blackwater and with our massive fleet control the Blackwater. So we have Seamus's character, Lord Viserys of Sweet Point Sound, who is a flamboyant schemer. He's quick, he's a skilled fighter, he's shrewd, a poet, he's a knight, he's a master schemer, he's ruthless, zealous, rough, proud, and ambitious. And he is married to Eleanor Sunglass, who was the former lady of this land anyway. So at least we keep the sunglasses around. And it's also Seamus' favourite house. So I know that he'll appreciate that. Then over on Driftmark, which is now called the Dragon's Rest, we have Lord Draco, who is an Andor and Valerian bastard who we've given land to, who lived around the Grand Lands. And we've given him land. He's a dutiful commander, an inspiring leader, a siege leader. He's weak, quick. A strategist, kind, content, honourable, honest, and a drunkard. And his sigil is that cool double dragon on a black background. Then we have Lord John of the Lagoon of House Hydra, who's John's character, obviously. And he is a skilled commander, a skilled steward, a skilled fighter, sorry, attractive, a knight, a master schemer, a duelist, a diligent, honest, a family person, lustful, proud, stubborn, and ruthless. And he's got that awesome black dragon on a green background, which is the sigil of House Hydra. He also is an Andal, but he has Westerosi Valyrian blood, the same as Draco. And then last but certainly not least over here on Claw Isle, which is now known as Falcon's Claw, is Lord Lucian Mendelton who is another great fighter he's a siege leader a skilled commander an unyielding leader he leads from the rear he's a trained fighter he's strong a knight gregorous trusting brave diligent patient humble and greedy and he is from a bastard branch of house aaron hence the falcon's claw name for his island going back to his aaron heritage so that is all our custom characters for the first episode, the seven. So, and then there will be seven introduced in the next episode and seven after that. And then I believe there's about five for episode four so far. So that's how many people have thought of, uh, thought of characters for this series so far. All Discord members 
Of course, please do feel free to join the Discord. We'd love to have you there, even if you don't want to get involved in this custom series. We'd still love to have you there. We've got a great community. There's a role play in there as well. But even without the role play, you don't have to take part in that. It's just a great community all about everything, really. It's a little bit mental in there, but it's a great laugh. So, here we are, Lord Stitch of Grandport. First things first, we want to get ourselves a wife. So, let's look in the find characters bookmark woman married no our religion anywhere uh let's see a good stewardship let's go for elenai maybe with her she's got very good stewardship we could probably get a very good steward by doing so learning hmm yeah i think we will go with olena elenai great stewardship mixed with our stewardship hopefully we'll have a child with incredible stewardship that way so there we go we'll arrange that so that's our marriage sorted we need to sort out our council so our just fit is obviously going to be jorman with his incredible diplomacy and we'll get him to go straight away and fabricate a claim on rosbear as we have a claim on these lands anyway down around the blackwater as we have the majority of it but yeah we want to claim rosbear that's the nearest kingdom probably the weakest of the kingdoms around us as well so the first one that we want to claim we need a master at arms we'll go with chris as he's our best marshal and we'll get him to train troops in grandport for now treasurer we don't actually have a custom treasurer just yet viserys has got 12 12 treasurer but he's more intrigue isn't he so he'll be our spy master so we don't have a treasurer just yet because you guys have all gone for the marshal uh so yeah we'll just get him there but i do think we have one coming in episode two spy master obviously for Ceres, and we'll get him to sabotage the economy in we'll do rosby as that's the one we're going to go for first out of the kingdoms court physician we'll just go for him he's the only guy we've got septon we'll just go for the top sept oh the other guy looked like a crown loyalist though so we'll go for him instead and we'll get him to perform charity in grandport for now and then we need our castello in our hand of the king we'll go with hmm best diplomacy draco best stewardship john lucy uh let's go with draco because he's content and not ambitious so we can trust him and we'll get him to improve defenses in grandport for now as we probably are going to be going to war early on and all these petty lordships and kingships like to join together to steamroll you early on which is why we have got some small event troops as we'd have no chance of getting past episode one so let's uh yeah we need to do the minor titles so our designated regent we will go with jorman our bodyguards will go with the four that are available to us for now which isn't mena uh master of the horse will go with we'll go with chris because he's actually on the mainland master of the hunt we'll go with let's go with john of uh john hydra we'll go with Viserys for our high almoner. Cupbearer, we will go with. Who can we trust? Who can we trust the most out of these? Lucian, you don't have ambitious, do you? No, so we'll go with Lucian. I think we can trust him. I hope we can trust you anyway, Lucian. Commanders, Lucian. And. Viserys. Um. John. And. Ooh, Draco's got more commanding traits than Jormin, so we'll go with Draco for now. So, yep, yeah, we've arranged our wife. We've got our council sorted. All crown loyalists, which is awesome. So, yep, yeah, we'll let our marriage come in so that we can found another ambition. And then we're going to have to have a look at these petty lordships around us and see which one is going to be the easiest for us to claim early on. Okay, Tumbleton is its own lordship. I didn't realise that. That's good because we do want to take tumbleton is that's going to be uh dick on whitewood's land to the magnificent lord stitch may you live in harmony and contentment i accept your suggestion so there we go we have got our marriage sorted out so that's great we want to st stop ourselves from leading armies we've got no right to be leading armies with our traits and hopefully that will get us a bride quicker as well by doing so just wait so we can put a new ambition and there we go we've fulfilled our ambition we'll go with Let's just go with have a son for now, because that'll probably be the next quickest one to do. And then, right, who are the who is the weakest out of these lands? Because 
We want to try and take these lands quickly, and then we can wait and make our realm a little bit better and bring more custom characters in. But we want to swallow these lordships up, because they will get swallowed up very quickly by the surrounding kings if we do not take them. But by trying to take them, we also then get people turn against us, so we need to do it quickly. So I may go for the one that's to the south to stop the Rosby Blackwater and Duskendale kings getting to us, and we can just get there and siege it quickly. Right, so let's have a look. We've got the Brems Fort, which... Has 1.7 thousand men. Farron's Cross has 1.7 as well. Dalston Keep, 2,000. Longwood Hall, 1,000. So that's going to be easy to take. Atterdale has 1.7. And Greensward, 1.7. So Langwood Hall is definitely going to be the easiest to take. So we will go for Langwood Hall first. So along the Rose Road, which gets it good trade as well as Andal Settlers. So it's got a decent trade route. So we do want to take that. So we will go for. The claim on Langwood Hall to start with, and we'll try and claim that. Let's bring in all our men and all our fleets. So we've got all our islanders out here, which are all going to get on the ships. And that's going to give us a decent amount of men, over 2,000 extra men. So we'll bring those down to the mouth of the Blackwater. And then we've got 380 men from Stokeworth and 200 men from Hayford. So we'll bring those down, as well as 500 men from our own grandpa armor we do have enough money for mercenaries so i may i may get some mercenaries we're probably just just to be safe so the strongest one is 300 and we get 3,000 men from that so we will hire that giving us 5,000 men just to make sure we do take this land so let's march straight on languid hall and we'll bring the others over to languid hall as well and Get the ships to dock into Grandport and then bring the rest of those 2,000 men down as quickly as possible. So there we go. They've raised 1,100 men. So 5,000 men should be able to smash that. Let's get our commanders in charge though. We'll have Lucian, John, and we'll just leave whoever he is. He's the commander of the mercenary company, I believe. We'll leave him in charge of it for now. Don't forget about the giveaway as well, guys. I'm doing for the 1,000 subs. It will be drawn on Sunday. So you've still got two days left to join that if you want to get involved with that. Make sure you do. It's for a free copy of um, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. There's no, no harm in entering for free and you get a chance of winning a great book. So, yeah, don't please don't forget. You can find that down in the description below. My lord, Lord Stitch, Sandstone is under attack from the Torrent. Well, I'm not getting down involved in Dawn. I'm not getting involved with that at all. And if you are finding this uh, channel for the first time, I do do a lot of custom house series. We have the Knights of the North series, which is doing really well on the channel. So be sure to check that out. It's a really good series. I'm really enjoying doing that. My lord, we've received word that Greensward, Lord Osgood, has led them in a correlation in defence against Langwood Hall. Right, okay, so this is where all the petty lords start going against us now. So, uh, the Lords of Faring Cross, Blackwater Rush King, that's not good. The Rosby King, right, so a load of kings are coming against us. So we need to try and siege this land as quickly as possible. So that we can end the war, because we will get absolutely smashed when the Rosby and Blackwater Kings start marching south so let's wait till all our host is here because we've got plenty of time still yet there's five thousand men there but i don't think that's all against us yeah i don't I, yeah i'm gonna say i don't think all of that was against us so i don't want to siege assault it yet as you can see we've got a huge fleet that's our main strength we just don't have the manpower to match it because obviously at the minute we have um some mercenaries and that so really we've probably only got about three thousand men without the mercenaries and event troops so Let's try and take Langwood Hall quickly. Here we go. They're already marching on our lands. But literally, because that's the only land he has, all we've got to do is storm this, and we should be able to get him to surrender. The Faith Militant Restored. The Faith of the Seven and High Septon historically had two military orders, collectively known as the Faith Militant, militant to call upon in defence of the Faith. The warrior sons were made up of fanatical knights, many from noble families who have vowed to fight enemies of the Faith. The Poor Fellows was the more humble order, made up of common folk and women. These lightly armed footmen protected the pilgrims of Westeros on their travels. Now the High Septum has acquired enough authority to restore the faith militant once more. Noble knights are flocking to join the warriors' sons. Small folk are joining the poor fellows in their hundreds. The faith is now truly a force to be reckoned with. Okay, but luckily we're Andal, so we hopefully won't have to worry about that. I don't want to assault this just yet, just in case. Just because our morale is a little bit lower, even though we've got a hell of a lot of men, so we could storm it, but... 
No one's coming to march on us, so we should be okay. We can we can wind it down all right. And hopefully take that, and then we can expand more, and we can give these lands to you guys who are coming into the next episode. Your enemy, Lord Franklin of Langwood Hall, has been captured by Lord Lucian Mendelton of Falcon's Claw. Well done, Lucian. You have ended the war for us. Well done, my friend. Well done. You have captured the Lord, and because of that, we can now offer peace and enforce our demands. The the Lord Stitch's claim on Langwood Hall War has ended. Lord Stitch of Grandport won. We have successfully seized the Lordship of Langwood Hall after defeating Lord Franklin of Langwood Hall. Of Langwood Hall. Okay. Oh, yeah, because they have dodgy names, don't they, uh, early on. Shall this territory be attached to the personal domains of Grandport, or shall Lord Franklin of Langwood Hall be confirmed as its rightful holder to ensure stability? I will take it for myself, and we will give it to one of our custom characters in the next episode. And we can now create... The High Lordship of Blackwater Bay. So yes, we will create that. And there we go. Lord Stitch of Grandport has created the title High Lordship of Blackwater Bay. And we want that to be our primary title. Lordship of Grandport has made the High Lordship of Blackwater Bay his primary title. Right, let's... Uh, we need to disband... All of these men, don't we? But I don't want to disband the... Uh, yeah, so we'll split off event troops there we go because we want to keep them and we will disband can we keep the uh mercenaries actually that'd be interesting to see if we can split off the mercenaries there we go so we've got the black war army and the army of lord lucian so which one Right, okay, so we've got the event. We've got them all there now, haven't we? Yes, okay. Let's split them up. For now, so we can work out which one's which. And we can disband those. Right, can we become a king already? Because technically we do... Yes, we can actually become a king after one episode because we have two high lordships we need to actually change the name of the other lordship so the high lordship of the blackwater bay will be the high lordship of grandport there we go and then the um high lordship this high lordship is now going to need to be changed to the high lordship of could be the Grand Islands, I suppose, for now. And so you guys come up with something better, obviously. That's just off the top of my head. So we'll uh, go with the High Lordship of the Grand Islands for now. Until you guys think of something better for it. There we go. And that is going to be our secondary thing for now, not our primary title. Disband that. What have we got here? There we go. Can we... Yes, we can declare war with the mercenaries, so we will keep the mercenaries and march them back home for now. I think we can anyway. Yes, we can, so we'll keep we'll keep the mercenaries for now. But there we go, we've expanded slightly, the Grand Lands have expanded. We've still got Atterdale, Green Guard, Dolson's Keep, Fairies Cross, and the Bramsfort to take. We do want to found our new kingdom so that we can become a king your achievement in founding the kingdom of grandport means the bloodline of house grand is now highly respected by all the people of your glorious domain house grand is now considered a traditional great house of the region house grand are the rightful kings of grandport awesome so we will organize a coronation in the next episode for that we've got an open council position we need now need a high admiral we will go with hmm who should we go with for that John is on Dragonstone, as it? So we'll go with John and then advisor Lucian. You can be an advisor for now. All crown loyalists as well, which is absolutely brilliant. Right. We will go for... Let's go for Atterdale next. We'll declare... They're at war with the Reach as well. Defending against... Vassalize H. Right, so they're, the Reach are trying to vassalize them. So we will force vassalization on them first and march on his lands quickly and take it before he loses to the reach and the reach swallow up 
these petty lands, which is annoying. That's the thing. The Reach and the Stormlands will swallow up these lands quickly if we don't act fast. So we're going to have to rush a little bit more than I'd like to, but we're going to have to do it, else we can't take... Else we will lose out on all these lands. Defending against the Reach. Look, they're all defending against the Reach at the moment, so we need to take these lands quickly, like I said. But people will come to their aid if we're not careful. Let's get Lucian, John, and this guy in charge for now. Your grace, we received word. Dalton's Keep Lord um, and has led in a coalition in defence against Atterdale. Okay, and so is the Brams Fort. Oh, God, and so is the Stormlands. You bastards. And so is Blackwater Rush. Right, so we need to take this. We need to take this very quickly, basically, guys. Uh, no, I'm not getting involved down in Sandstone again. Right. How long till we can siege it? We could siege it. Oh, God, that's a lot of uh, Stormlander men marching around. Let's get the siege down and assault quickly and take this land. And we'll end the episode after this, the first episode, so we can get some more of those custom characters in to episode two so we can expand our land. Oh, we've got a nice light pink for our kingdom as well now, which is very nice. There we go. Let's attempt an assault, and we should be able to assault that land. There we go. 99%. Oh, for God's sake. We can enforce demands at 99% though, so that's okay. So at least we can end that war. Well, we're just waiting for him to accept our peace offer. I love that light pink that the Grandlands is now. It's a shame that we can't change it to a nice dark blue, which is the colours of their uh, house grand. The Blackwater Bay Atterdale Vacillation War has ended. King Stitch of Grandport won. To the chivalrous noble stitch, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept your offer of peace. There we go. So we forced him to be a vassal of House Atterdale. We will revoke his lands to give to another lord in the next episode, another custom lord. But we will end the first episode here for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the start of this new custom series. It's going to go on for a long time, just like the Knights of the North. Wow, that is a big gardener army there, which is trying to uh, take Dalston's Keep, which is one of the lands that we want, you bastards. So, yeah, like I said, we need to swallow these lands up quickly. But anyway, back on track. Yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and join the Discord server if you want to get involved in this series. And hopefully I'll see you very soon for my next video, which should be the Knights of the North on Sunday.